How to enjoy the process of progressing as a musician, as a producer, as a songwriter, when you just feel like you suck. I started playing piano when I was eight years old. I picked up the trumpet in middle school and then I stopped playing piano. When I was about 16, I started playing guitar and I started writing songs and I started rapping. I got this gig with a Latin reggae band and we toured the United States, even down in South America, up in Canada for about seven years. Around the time where that started to fizzle out, I wanted to take myself seriously as a musician. And so I decided to audition for the University of Miami for a degree in jazz trumpet. And luckily I got in. And from there I graduated and decided I wanted to become a producer and so in 2017, I started producing for TV film. I started to get my first placements with McDonald's, with Discovery Channel, with BET, Bravo, ESPN. And then I decided I wanted to work with major artists. And so I started to make my way and I started landing some placements with Rhapsody, with Major 7, with Will Gittens. And through all of that time, 20 years up to this very point, I still feel like I suck. But there's a big difference now in how I feel about myself versus the past 20 years. I remember when I was studying at the University of Miami and I would have a bad practice in the morning. Just things weren't locking in. I couldn't get my embouchure right. My tone was whack. I had a private lesson the next day and I just couldn't get things down in line. And that one hour that I would spend practicing in the morning at 6 a.m. would ruin the rest of my day. I would let it ruin the rest of my day. And when I say ruin my day, I mean showing up to class with a bad attitude. Going to my girlfriend's house after school with a bad attitude. Eating the most delicious food that her mom would cook because they were Cuban and her mom was just an amazing cook. And I'd be eating that food thinking about 16 hours ago and that bad practice I had. Talk about the most unhealthy mindset ever. But each day I would put in that work, I would put in that work, I would put in that work. And because you put in work each day, you gradually get better. But you don't see the improvement because it's so slow. And I remember being in high school and one of my teachers told me this saying that has never left me. I was sitting there in AP music theory class because I've always been a nerd. And there were about 12 of us in the class. We're all in a semicircle around our teacher and he was a jazz saxophonist. And he was shedding this one lick and he was like, like, tri like getting stuck on this one part. He sounded really good, but you can tell like he was tripping up on this one part. And there was this one moment where he went, I suck. And we're like, dude, what are you talking about? You don't suck. Like, listen to yourself. And he's like, no, 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 no. You guys suck. I just suck a little less. And that has never left me. Because as a musician, no matter how good you get, you're never going to be as good as you know you can be or as good as you want to be. I know for a fact, if time travel was possible and I could show my 13 year old self how I sound now and records that I've put out and collaborations that I've done, if I could show that kid what I sound like now, I would be impressed. But the Bruce I am now knows how much better I can be. And so I still feel like I suck because I'm aware of the gap between where I am and what I know my potential is and what I'm working toward every day. But the difference between now and the past 20 years of my life is I enjoy where I'm at. I've let go of the self-judgment, the hatred, and the self-criticism that comes from having a bad practice session or that comes from releasing music out into the world and hearing crickets or putting your blood, sweat, and tears into a production and being vulnerable and people don't like it or they don't appreciate it or they don't listen to it. I remember spending an entire morning from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. working on an intro for a production that I was working on with somebody. And that's literally all I did. I didn't eat breakfast. I hardly used the bathroom. I put so much energy and effort into that intro and I sent it over to them. And almost immediately they were like, yeah, I don't like this. I don't want to use it. And for like three days, I was crushed. That was about three years ago, not even that far back. And this past week, a student of mine, really great producer, he hit me up to lay some trumpets on his record. So I listened to the track. I spent a few hours laying down some trumpet tracks. I laid down like 20 trumpets trumpet tracks. I had like fat layers on it. I sent it over to him. I was super excited. And he got back to me. He's like, man, this isn't really what I was looking for. He sent me a reference. He was like, I was actually looking for something like this. And three years ago, me, eight years ago, me would have been crushed because I spent like hours on that. And he just didn't like it. And he didn't even sugarcoat the message for me. How rude of him. But now my reaction is, oh, he didn't like it. This is the reference. Oh, I see how that's different from what I did. Okay, cool. Let me listen to this over and over again so I can kind of get this in. And then let me revisit the track. And that's what I did. I went out for a walk for about 20 minutes. I listened to that chunk over and over and over again. And then I went in and I recorded a completely different idea. And you know what? 
That idea was so much better. It made the first thing I recorded sound like complete trash. I sent it to him, he loved it, he wanted the stems, and now we're moving forward with the project. And that's the main difference. It's letting go of the self-criticism. It's letting go of the self-judgment. Your own judgment that only exists in your mind, it doesn't exist in the world. You're putting it on your own self. I'm making this video today because I made a post not too long ago inside my Piano for Producers Academy, and members in our academy loved it. And I I want to share that post with you right now. How to enjoy the process when you feel like you suck. Simple, just allow yourself to. This isn't woo-woo, I promise. We do music because we love it. We are also aware of the huge gap between where we are and where we want to be. Keeping the focus on that gap at all times leads us to being frustrated 24-7. While there's some overlap, practice is the time to focus and get better. Typically, less enjoyment. Creation is the time to let intuition take over and have fun doing whatever the F you want. You don't have to be good to have fun. Give a three-year-old a toy piano and watch him sound like shit while having the time of his life. Zen level is having fun while you practice even through your mistakes, which is the ultimate goal. More on that right here. And this is the mindset module inside our program. Music is fun. Let it be fun. Simple as that. Big love, Bruce, DJ Khaled is Zen level beats because this freaking gif is everything. And you can see everybody came down here and they you know, shared their thoughts. We have such a lively community. It's such a good time in here. But if I scroll back up and I click on this mindset module, this is gonna take us right into the mindset portion of the Piano for Producers Academy. If you're not in here and you're a producer, you're missing out. So I share this with you today because as fun as it is to go over, here are the cool hacks you can do, here are the cool passing chords, this is how you wanna think about this, check out this Neo Soul secret. If you don't have the right mindset, if you don't have the right belief system, if you don't have the right approach to your music, if you're constantly beating yourself up, if you're constantly feeling like you're not good enough, if you're constantly not enjoying the journey and the process of getting better, you will never ever feel good about yourself as a musician. Because the honest truth about being a producer and a musician is you will never feel like you're as good as you can be. No matter how good you get, you'll just be sucking a little less than you did the day before. Honestly, the best thing you can do for yourself if you really wanna excel as a musician is just to allow yourself to have fun. The only person that's keeping you frustrated is you. The only person that's keeping you sad because you're not where you wanna be is you. The only person that's not allowing you to enjoy that 1% improvement that you are making every single day, even when it doesn't feel like it, is you. So we can simply take those things and flip it to the inverse, and that's our solution. Feeling frustrated because you just messed up? Laugh at yourself. Feeling down because you didn't put the work in that you know you needed to that day? Just shake it off and just do it tomorrow. And one last thing I wanna share with you that I think has really helped my mental health as a musician is having an identity outside of music. And you may resonate with this, you may not resonate with this, but for such a long period of my life, I was so single-mindedly obsessed with music that it was my entire identity. It was the only thing I cared about. I didn't even care about learning about other things. I wasn't curious about anything. If it had nothing to do with music, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. And while that had some pros in the fact that, you know, I was able to learn several instruments, I was able to learn production, I was able to, you know, increase my skill set in a lot of different areas as a musician, as a performer, as a writer, as a composer, as a producer, all of these things, every single other area of life took a hit. My relationships were shit. My fitness was shit. I didn't know how to have conversations with people. I was like super socially awkward. I couldn't have meaningful conversations because I would have like nothing to contribute, especially if people weren't musicians. It was, it was absolutely crazy. And I started to notice a huge shift in the way I felt about myself when I started to explore other interests. When I first started building this business of educating producers online, I started getting into marketing and I was like, hey, I actually really like this. This is kind of cool. I started leaning more into my teaching and I started realizing, wow, I actually have a gift for teaching. This is nice. People are getting some value out of what I'm doing here. And then somewhere along the line, I started to become more curious and I started to read about other things like astrophysics. Shout out to Star Talk Podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson and the ever so funny Chuck Nice. And psychology and philosophy. And I started to find these other areas of life that that interested me, that I was naturally curious about because I actually started to get out of the music bubble and spent time learning about other things.
things and just trying other things and see if they interested me. There was also many other things I read about or things I tried that I didn't really like. And so I say all this to say, I started to develop an identity that wasn't just so focused on music. I had these different branches of myself that not only made me a more interesting person overall, but allowed me to feel better about myself if I had a bad practice day or if I sent music to somebody and they didn't like it. I was like, oh, well, my relationships are dope. My fitness is dope. I'm really curious about this other thing. Hmm, I wonder what Neil deGrasse Tyson said on Star Talk today. Like there were other areas that I can latch onto that felt like me. It wasn't just about this one thing. Real quick, as I'm sitting here editing this video, I'm getting a little bit emotional because I'm thinking about my past and I'm thinking about my history and how this seemingly unrelated thing had so much impact on my musical development in a negative way and so much impact on, on my entire life in a negative way that I wish somebody would have made this video earlier and showed me because if I would have taken the time to develop an identity outside of music, my actual music would have progressed faster. Again, I don't know if you can relate to this, if you have done this in your life, but if you have, hopefully you can take heed to this advice. So this video, way less structured than my usual videos, but I feel like it's such an important topic. And so if I were to just bullet point some of the key takeaways here, number one would be just to allow yourself to enjoy the process. It sounds so simple, but when you catch yourself being overly mean to yourself and beating yourself up and putting yourself down, just don't do it. Be kind to yourself and allow yourself to enjoy it even though you don't sound the way you want to, you're working towards it. Number two would be to find other things that interest you and you don't know what's gonna interest you until you try it out. I didn't know I was gonna like marketing until I started marketing. I was like, hey, this is kinda cool. I didn't know I was gonna like philosophy until I started reading about philosophy. I didn't know I was gonna like astrophysics until I ran into Neil deGrasse Tyson and StarTalk. Just try different things, try it on, see how it fits. If you don't like it, put it back on the rack. If you like it, take it with you for as long as it stays with you. And last but not least, if you would like to be plugged into a community of like-minded musicians, if you would like to have direct access to me to ask me questions whenever you like, click the link in the description below and join our Piano for Producers squad. It's absolutely free. We have some awesome courses in there that you can go through. And it's just a really fun, wonderful place to be, to learn, to grow together. Hope you got some value out of this video, stuff to think about, stuff to chew on. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.